To conclude our study of compound propositions, in this lesson, we'll be looking at the hypothetical proposition. In addition to this, we'll also take a look at what happens when we combine some of the compound propositions that we've been discussing. The last of the compound propositions, the hypothetical, links two propositions by hypothesizing that the truth of the first proposition will imply the truth of the second. These propositions will take the form if p then q in variable notation. For a simple example, consider if frogs are amphibians, then they are animals. If it is true that frogs are amphibians, then it is true that they are also animals. The truth of these propositions is a bit more complicated than the prior two compound forms, as they will only be false in situations where the assumed initial proposition is true and the latter turns out false. For example, the hypothetical proposition, if I am a human, then I am an animal, is false only when I am a human is true, but I am an animal is false. This is because the hypothetical seeks to assert that the first statement cannot be true without the second being true. Because of this, the only situation in which the hypothetical is false will be exactly when the supposed initial proposition is true, but the second implied proposition still turns out false. As this table shows, the only situation when the hypothetical proposition if p then q is false is when p is true and q is false. Strangely enough, this means that whenever p is false, if p then q is true, no matter what q is. For example, take p to be Obama is president and q to be unicorns are real. Then the statement if p then q is if Obama is president, then unicorns are real. Since p is false, Obama is no longer president. Then the statement as a whole is true under these logical conditions, even though as far as we know, unicorns aren't real. Now let's consider a hypothetical compound proposition. If frogs are amphibians, then they are animals. The hypothetical is true because amphibians are a type of animal, so a frog cannot be an amphibian without being an animal. The truth of the first proposition implies the truth of the second. Now let's consider an alternative example. If the animal is an amphibian, then it is a frog. This hypothetical is false, as there are amphibians that are not frogs, so the first proposition may be true without the second having to be true. Finally, let's take the case, if scorpions are insects, then frogs are amphibians. In this case, the hypothetical is true despite the fact that the first proposition is false. Scorpions are arachnids, not insects. The truth of this proposition lies in the fact that frogs are in fact amphibians, so the latter proposition would be true if scorpions turned out to be insects or not. Specifically, if scorpions were in actuality insects, then this proposition could not be true without the proposition frogs or amphibians being true, as we know the latter to be true. Finally, it should be understood that, as compound propositions are formed through the combination of two simpler propositions, they themselves can be used to form more complex compound propositions. Some examples from natural language could be if it is raining or snowing, then my car is covered in water, and I have a dog and I have a cat or I have a hamster. The first sentence is a disjunctive proposition combined with a hypothetical proposition, and the second is a conjunctive proposition combined with a disjunctive proposition. Within both of these, as it is commonly done in natural language, compound propositions are abbreviated into what appears to be a single simple proposition. From our examples above, it is raining or snowing really represents the disjunctive proposition, it is raining or it is snowing. In order to understand the conditions for the truth of these types of statements, one must go to the simplest compound proposition from which the complex proposition is composed and determine its truth or falsity. Once this has been done, one should continue on to the next simplest compound proposition and determine the same. In continuing this process of stepping up to the next level of complexity, eventually the truth or falsity of the whole proposition should be revealed. From our second example in this section, I have a dog and a cat or I have a hamster, let's assume I have only a dog, then the compound proposition I have a dog and I have a cat will be false based on the truth conditions for conjunction discussed above. Next, let's assume I do have a hamster, then the proposition I have a dog and a cat or I have a hamster becomes a simple disjunction with one of its disjuncts being false and the other being true. As we know from our discussion of disjunction, this means that this complex compound proposition is true. Within Aristotelian logic, compound propositions are incredibly useful as often we wish to assert more than one claim in the same proposition. In 
In this lesson, we discuss the hypothetical proposition, which claims to assert that the truth of a proposition is implied by the truth of a preceding proposition. We also discuss the possibility of combining multiple compound propositions to form complex compound propositions. The truth of these propositions can be found using the same processes studied in the preceding lessons, starting at the simplest propositions and building up.